The zygote grows with mitosis and it forms the embryo. After a period of time, when the egg is fertilized around 9 months, the baby is born. After that, meiosis is used to grow and develop the baby into a That's the cycle of peace. There are two main components of meiosis, each comprising of multiple phases. There's meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Before that, into phase 4. In meiosis 1, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, and so mesis occurs. In meiosis 2, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, and so mesis occurs. In the end of meiosis 1, two dark cells are formed in total. After meiosis 2, four dark cells are formed. Before we get started, it should be mentioned that there are two main types of cells here. There are haploid and diploid cells. Haploid cells in a human are the sex cells or the gametes. There is the sperm cell and the egg cell. Haploid cells also only have one set of chromosomes. This is commonly annotated by the letter N. Diploid cells, however, have two sets of chromosomes. This can be represented by 2N. Humans are considered diploid organisms because we have two copies of chromosomes. First, the cell will go through interphase. The cell will grow to a specific size. Since the cell split is splitting itself, it shouldn't be too small. Next, the cell will duplicate its DNA so that each daughter cell will have DNA. Then, it will start to grow again. That is the end of the interface. Now the cell enters minus one. <clears throat> First, in prophase 1, the DNA coils tightly around together. Then, the nuclear membrane starts to disappear as depicted in the picture. Crossover, when the DNA coils are together in, pair, in the form of parent-homologous chromosomes, portions of the chromosome will exchange. This allows the recombination of genes. Once the chromosomes have crossed over, they are in the center of the large cell. This begins the by phase 1. The nuclear membrane will disappear Tubules shorten and pull the chromosomes by the centimeter so as to close as the pigment in this photo. The sister chromosomes follow along with them. Then, telophase, aka telophase 1, occurs. Here, whatever was done in prophase is undone. The nuclear membrane reforms around the chromosomes and the daughter nuclei. Now, each of the nuclei contain two sister chromatids for each chromosome. They're attached by a common centromere. Right after this, cytokinesis follows. The cell membrane pinches to form a cleavage and then it splits the cell into two. Now, meiosis 1 is complete. Meiosis 2 results in those two dark cells forming each two dark cells. In the end, there will be four dark cells formed. Oh. Now, the process in meiosis 2 occurs very similar to mitosis. These processes have the same names as those in meiosis 1, with the two instead of the one. In prophase 2, the nuclear envelope breaks down and a new spinal fiber forms. After prophase 2 follows metaphase 2, the chromosomes align at the center of each of the daughter cells. A new spindle forms and it binds the chromosomes at the centromeres. After that, it, there's anaphase 2. The spindle fibers shorten and grabs the chromatids by the centromeres to the opposite poles of the cell, and the cells start to expand, getting ready for division. Next is telophase 2. Telophase 2 is undo, undo of prophase 2. In this phase, the new panel reforms. The glue which forms around as the cell pinches and the glue which expands. Oh. The cells split in cytokinesis, forming four genetically different daughter cells in total. The chromosomes uncoil in the DNA. All cells are genetically different and contain some genetic information from both parents. Some sources of genetic variability include independent assortment, crossing over, and random fertilization. In independent assortment, genes for each trait separate when gametes are formed. In crossing over, portions of both the parents' chromosomes are exchanged in prophase 1. In random fertilization, only one sperm with a specific combination of genes fertilizes an egg. All of this allows for billions of gene combinations. Now here are some errors and consequences in meiosis. Some errors include non-disjunctions and the breakage of chromosomes. Non-disjunctions are when chromosomes don't separate properly, like in this picture. There are some non-disjunctions during myosis 1, and here is the outcome. And here is the non-disjunction during myosis 2, and here are the outcomes over here. Now the breakage of 
chromosomes include displacement, deletion, and duplication. A chromosome is duplicated, deleted by accident, removed by accident, or misplaced, and that can lead to a breakage of chromosomes. These two things can lead to some consequences. A person can receive an, receive an extra chromosome, leading to the, some of the diseases, including Down syndrome, Edward syndrome, and the Patel syndrome. Whatever chromosome the person has extra of, impact the disease that a person has. Oh. The point of meiosis is to create genetically different cells. In mitosis, cells are simply duplicated. If the cell has problems, then those will pass on to the daughter cells in mitosis. In meiosis, daughter cells won't have the same problems as the parent cells. This is because cells are genetically different and cells might not have the same problems as the parent cells. <laughs>